Assalamu alaikum. Excellencies, heads of states and government, dear colleagues, distinguished guests, delegates, friends, and partners. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates, to Dubai, and to COP28. And allow me first to thank all of you for being here in person, for your engagement, for your guidance, and for your continued support. I'd like to begin this conversation with you today with a very simple point, and that is energy is actually our friend. Energy is our friend. It runs everything we rely on, from phones to factories. It keeps our homes, actually, it keeps your homes warm and our homes cool. <laughs> It allows children to study at night and hospitals to treat them if they become ill. In short, the world does not work without energy. Yet, the world will break down if we don't fix the energies we use today. The world will break down if we don't mitigate the emissions at a gigaton scale. And the world can potentially break down if we don't rapidly transition to zero carbon alternatives. These are facts we must come to terms with. And I know that you, your excellencies, and CEOs and chairmen of well-established, reputable companies from all over the world, I know that you respect the science. And if we do respect the science, we must translate that notion and to real action. That is why the COP28 presidency is launching the Global Decarbonization Accelerator. The Global Decarbonization Accelerator addresses the demand and the supply of energy at the same time. It is a holistic approach. It is a comprehensive plan for a system-wide change. And it aligns more companies and countries around the North Star of keeping 1.5 within reach than ever before. It is a fact. It is indeed a fact that this program and this initiative does align with keeping 1.5 within reach. And yes, it is the first time ever. That is why the COP28 presidency is asking all parties to sign the global pledge to triple renewable energy capacity and double energy efficiency by 2030. And I have some good news for you. Up until this moment, before I stepped on stage, we have received 117 signatories representing 117 countries. So 117 countries have endorsed the pledge. And I am here capitalizing on this opportunity 
to be loud and clear about my continued persistence of asking all parties to join. I appreciate those who have believed in our mission and our drive and have signed up to this, but I do need more. And I'm kindly requesting all parties to come on board as soon as possible, please. This can and will help transition the world away from unabated coal. So we don't only come with initiatives that are not pragmatic or practical or fully equipped by real technological solutions and economic propositions. We don't come and say, shut this down, but we don't have the solution. We say we gradually go down on this and we go up on that. And we equip it and facilitate it and enable it with solutions, with technology, with capital, with economic propositions, with policy. That is what is needed. It is not either or. It is a parallel approach. And if we do it right, and if we do it fast, they will converge much faster than you can ever imagine. But we must start. And that said, greening electricity only addresses 30% of the challenge we face today. What does that mean? While I do appreciate the fact that this, this is a very good step, in fact, it's a big step in the right direction, yet it only addresses 30%. What do we need? We need many more different solutions for heavy emitting industries. And that is why our plan includes the Industrial Transition Accelerator. This partnership cuts across all heavy emitting industries including heavy transportation, aluminum, steel, and cement. You know and I know these industries, these important industries that our economies very much rely on, cannot run on renewable energy alone. Again, that's another fact that we must come to terms with. This initiative and program will focus on faster adoption of zero carbon energies like hydrogen. It will push for smart policies to commercialize and scale the hydrogen value chain. And for hydrogen, while I appreciate the progress made thus far, one has to consider and think and reflect what would it really take for the hydrogen industry to take off. Policy, advancement of technology, applying capital to scale up this technology, but we also need the market. Without the market, this industry will not see light. So let's define the market and let's develop one standard for the market so we can see much more capital flow into advancing the scaling up of technology and the commercialization of the hydrogen industry. We're not there yet. And I'm here not breaking news. Those who are in the industry are very aware of where we stand. And I know that almost all energy companies that have the techn technology background, that have the engineering capability, that have the people, that have the capital, that have the access, all of them have hydrogen very high on their priority list. Yet, they're waiting for the market to mature. And to mature the market, that's where governments need to step up. And that's where inst inst international institutions need to develop 
a standard that will allow for hydrogen to start flowing in the market. Excellencies, as we race to build the energy system we need, we must do all we can to decarbonize the energy system we have today. That is, in fact, a critical success factor for us. And that is one of the main objectives and strategic imperatives of the Global Decarbonization Accelerator, is to provide all solutions to decarbonize the current energy system while we phase up all new sources of energy that are zero carbon emission. And that means we must work very hard into taking real actions to decarbonizing fossil fuels. On this, I have been very clear. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I must repeat myself. The oil and gas industry must align around our North Star of keeping 1.5 within reach. And that is exactly the rationale and the thinking behind the oil and gas decarbonization charter that we are announcing today. This initiative, it's a big step for many. And I know it's a giant leap for some, especially those who have not already started on this journey before. So far, 50 international and national oil companies representing over 40% of global oil production have signed up. That is a phenomenal achievement. 19 of them are adopting net zero 2050 targets for the first time. And 31 have also committed to net zero methane emissions by 2030 for the first time. Now, now, is it enough? Again, hear me out, please. No, it is not enough. And I say it with full passion and conviction. I know that much more can be done. I know that they have the engineering capability. I know they have the capacity. I know they have the capital. I know they have the technology. I know they have the access. And I know that this industry has decades of accumulated experience in managing the most complex projects. If we were to combine all of these ingredients together and enable it with a platform that will allow for them to talk and to engage and to cooperate and to collaborate, we will be able to move much faster in this energy transition. And that is one of the main strategic imperatives behind the Global Decarbonization Accelerator. I do know and I fully acknowledge and respect the position of many countries and companies, IOCs and NOCs. And yes, I do agree that this is a very good step in the right direction. But I will not stop. I will keep pushing for more. Methane is the low-hanging fruit. It is, an, it is an easy and a an quick win. Let's not overcomplicate the situation. I know you can do it. And I trust that you can do it. The sector must tackle the harder part of all scope one and two emissions. And it must invest much more in clean energy and other clean technologies to help address scope three.
We agreed in the beginning of this discussion that we will be factual and will come to terms with realities. What I'm trying to present here is facts and realities. And like I said, and just like I'm asking companies and industry and corporates to step up, I am also asking governments to step up. They need to be creative. They need to be innovative. And they need to come out of their comfort zone. They need to start thinking in a more progressive manner to develop new policies that will help trigger and activate and incentivize and motivate the private sector to come and invest more in decarbonization as well as in the new sources of energy. Methane and other non-CO2 gases are responsible for half of today's global warming. That is why the commitment made by the US and China last month was such a historic moment. And we're very proud, as the United Arab Emirates, to be the ones that have enabled this whole engagement. <laughs> to have the two biggest economies commit to develop economy-wide plans for reducing these potent emissions, that is not a small step. That is, in fact, a big achievement. And I'm asking all parties to submit 20, 35 NDCs that are economy-wide and cover all GHGs in their submissions. <laughs> For the initiative of the accelerator to be truly comprehensive, they must connect and build on existing initiatives. We don't want to work in silos. We must go and capitalize on what is already out there, what already exists, like the Breakthrough Agenda. Today, we are launching the Emirates Breakthroughs, which outlines priority and actions for government and for private sector, like investing jointly in collaborative programs in research and development. And I'm pleased to say that 56 countries representing over 60% of global GDP are now supporting actions across power, steel, hydrogen, transport, agriculture, buildings, and cement. That's a great achievement as well. <laughs> Excellencies, everything I have outlined adds up to more countries and more companies from more sectors than ever before. And I don't want to repeat it again. One point I want to underline, though. Everything is underpinned with full inclusivity, and everything is aligning with our North Star of keeping 1.5 within reach. And allow me to say, we have all the necessary momentum. We have the traction. We have the positivity. And I ask you all, to build on it and capitalize on it and help us move even faster. We need your energy to decarbonize the world's energy. And I know we can do it, and I know we can do it now. So let's please work together and let's get results. I thank you.